Well, it's been a week. And as good as it looks, it's not what I expected. So if you remember in last week's video, I did a video on preventing Poa annua by using a fall pre-emergent. And I hinted at I was trying to do something about the Poa annua that is already emerged and established. There is no selective herbicide that works in cool season grasses to kill specifically Poa annua. There are several things that claim to do it. Um, one of which I've found has had some pretty mixed reviews, mostly good reviews. So I figured I'd try it, and that's Poa Constrictor, which its primary active ingredient is uh, ethyl fumicate. So last week, before I put the pre-emergent down, the day before that, I went ahead and applied the, uh, the Poa Constrictor. And I let that sit for 24 hours without watering. Uh, the label suggests, I think, 12 hours of nobody on it and no watering for 24, so I waited at least that. I didn't expect results right away, but I certainly didn't expect this. All right, well, I mean, from a distance, it looks great, but the only thing I've really noticed different is that there's a lot less seed heads, but they're still here. So I can get the shadow out of the way, but they're still here. See that? Stuff is still here. So it doesn't look like it's dinged or struggling or anything. The stuff's still growing. It's still just coming in so there are a few places let's see if I can find one here that I did see some sort of reaction out of it but there are very few spots I know there's one over here so I'll work my way over here don't mind all the dog spots that's the joy of having dogs um, there were a couple places like right here here's one see that where it's whitening. That's kind of what I expected all over the place. And I just haven't seen that a little bit, not much. Like here's another one. Let's see where it looks like it's having an effect on things. I was fully expecting to see that all over the place. Now you can see this spot here where the poe annual hasn't gotten so bad, but it's worked its way around towards the fence. I was expecting to see an awful lot of this that's not the case. There's maybe five or six little patches that are like that. Like here, here's a bigger spot of this POA stuff. And it's just not, it's not getting dinged like I want it to. But I have a plan. So the ethofumicate is kind of tricky. Different grass types, it has different application rates. For perennial ryegrass, it's an ounce and a half. That's the max rate per 1,000 square feet and for Kentucky bluegrass the max rate is 9 sixteenths of an ounce per thousand square feet Now this has Kentucky bluegrass as well as perennial ryegrass So I went with the lower one so that I don't do any damage to the Kentucky bluegrass Kentucky bluegrass is very closely related to Poa annua. So you got to be kind of a little careful with it So did I expect a massive die-off? No, because I don't want to kill the Kentucky bluegrass, but I expected a little bit more um, Doing some reading, some of you guys suggested in the comments of my last video to mix it with Tenacity. Now, it's no secret, I'm not a fan of Tenacity. I have it, I've used it, never been really impressed with it. Um, however, it is labeled to kind of suppress Poa annua. It won't kill it, it's not going to. So if you think you're gonna run out and buy Tenacity and wipe out Poa annua, you're in for a rude awakening. Um, but if it can suppress it, if it can ding it, if it can put it into a point where it's hurting so bad that the ethofumicate can be more effective, I'm willing to try it. So my next application is in two weeks. I'll probably mix this nanasty in with it. Now with the ethofumicate, it does say to apply it every three to four weeks, three times in the fall, then twice in the spring. So this may be something that just takes months to get rid of. I don't know. We're going to find out together. So in two weeks, I'll do my second app. I'll mix the tenacity in it. About three weeks after that, I'll do it again. And we'll see what happens. Um, by then, we're going to be close to winter time. And I'll probably just wait until the spring to do anything else. Um, 
I did apply some of the ethyl fumicate to the front yard because it, it is labeled to also control uh, crabgrass as well as clover. And from the renovation I did earlier in the year, I still have some crabgrass and clover out there. So we'll see how that works too. Uh, next video I do update, I'll let you know how that works. It also acts as a pre-emergent for a couple of months for the POA annua. So figured what can it hurt? I went, out, went ahead and put an application on the front yard yesterday. And we'll kind of see what happens with the crabgrass and the clover. Hopefully, uh, if there is any POA annual out there, it will catch it right away and eliminate it. Prior to the renovation, it was mostly POA trivialis, which I think I successfully killed off. We'll find out this winter. Um, POA constrictor's not labeled for that at all, so I don't expect that to do anything, but um, hopefully I wipe that stuff out. We'll see. Uh, but I did put, or I'm going to put, um, superdiamine out there as well, probably in about two weeks. And um, get a good pre-emergent program going in addition to the POA constrictor. Airplane. So anyways, I'm not going to tell you to run out and buy POA constrictor. I don't like encouraging you guys to buy something that I don't know that it's going to work. Um, it's pretty expensive stuff. I mean, 140 bucks for three quarters of a gallon is pretty spendy. Now, if it works, it's going to be well worth the money. We'll see what happens. Um, if you decide to go out and look for it, it's kind of hard to find. Um, and if you want to spend the money on it, by all means, I'm going to tell you, I didn't tell you to do it. Um, it's kind of a test. If you're battling with Poa Annua, let's ride out this test. Let's see what happens. Because unfortunately, you know, with Poa Annua, usually in most places in the country, in the summertime, as it starts to get consistently pretty warm, it will kill it off. Well, where I live, west of the Cascade Mountains in the Pacific Northwest, we don't get consistent high temperatures. Even with record-breaking high this year of 113 degrees, it didn't really affect this stuff too much because we just don't get consistent high temperatures. So there's a lot of guys between central Oregon all the way to the Canadian border that are west of the Cascade Mountains that have this problem. We don't get very hot. We're constantly uh, getting rained on, even though this has been one of the drier years ever. I had high hopes that that would actually kill this POA annual off. Lack of water and hotter temperatures, and it just didn't do it. It didn't do anything. So I did try some anew earlier this year. Um, looking around online about, or other YouTube videos on people using a new plant growth regulator and that it would wipe out POA annua. Well, I did that several times in the spring and didn't wipe out anything. It suppressed it, but as soon as I stopped applying the anew because of the higher uh, temperatures of the summer, it came right back. So I'm not gonna encourage you to go out and buy that either. Uh, unless you need a plant growth regulator for some other reason. Um, anyway, we'll see what happens. I'll give an update video here when I see a change. <laughs> At the very least, in about two weeks, I'll, I'll give you another update. But hit the subscribe button if you haven't already so you can see that. And if you found anything useful out of this, hit the like button. I really appreciate it. It doesn't cost you anything to hit the like button just helps me out let me know what i'm doing is worth it so anyways thanks for watching we'll see you in the next one